Hey friends, hey mind wanderers. Welcome to another exciting deep dive here on IGTV Live with yours truly. Um, my name is Sam Led. I am a life strategist, trauma coach, and soon to be author, knock on wood. How's everyone doing tonight? Hey Austin, welcome. Tonight's uh, IGTV Live is sponsored by Wyndham Hill Records. I'm addicted to this CD. It's, I think that's George Winston on the piano. It's beyond brilliant. And those of you that have, hey man, how are you? Those of you that have been watching my IGTV lives know how I kind of start these things. I want to talk to you tonight about your mind and how we can clear out those noisy, unruly tenets in the form of mind noise, in the form of head chatter. Hey, Jeannie, welcome. From your mind that is not serving your greater purpose. And more specifically, I want to talk to you about... <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I'm glad you're here, too. This um, IGTV Live is for all of you. For all of you. You, you, and you in the nosebleed seats. And I kind of wanted to talk to you about more specifically diving into when you go through a major life change and zeroing in on a breakup or a terrible ending of a marriage or something that is causing you major distress that is, that is maybe it's a loss or a betrayal that you can't get your mind off of. Sometimes, you know, these things happen to us. You know, we, we, hey Linda, welcome. Linda from Indonesia. I see some old faces, some old friends. Specifically when we were in a relationship or in a partnership or in a marriage with someone who we knew was toxic for us, but we stayed on anyways because we believed in love, we believed in the construct of love, and we're good people. Hey, Suscal, welcome. Good morning from Indonesia. Well, good evening from Southern California. I am here live in Santa Barbara on a beautiful, sunny, 75 degrees today. No rain. It's wonderful. So most of you have had breakups, have had heartache, but the relationships that have been toxic for you and maybe you're going through something right now where you were in a relationship with either a narcissist, someone that either was diagnosed with a with narcissistic personality disorder, or someone that was a sociopath, or someone who just was toxic and, and it just was not healthy for you, but you stayed in it. And unfortunately, the toxic entrails, the artifacts left over from that relationship are still haunting you. And a lot of us go through this, a lot of us don't want to even admit to it that we are still stuck in this toxic loop of, of feeling depressed and anxious and feeling overwhelmed with sadness and feeling like a failure and feeling broken and damaged, even in a relationship that ended years ago. And how it affects our current relationships, if you're in a new relationship or you're in a new partnership or in a new marriage or whatever it is, sometimes the past continues to haunt us at no fault of our own. So the first thing I want you to do tonight is think back, those of you that are struggling, those of you that are struggling with these feelings and your mind is on a daily basis filled with those feelings of betrayal and feeling that you really were taken advantage of and and even the most alpha male and and the, the most mature adult we all, we all try to be adults and, and be and, and be able to move past that even if you have kids and have other things going on in your life and you have jobs a lot of times these past betrayals these past traumas collude and ruin a lot of our future relationships or and or can make them more complicated and also impact your decision making when it comes to your, your your work when it comes to 
things in life you need to make decisions on. And, and a lot of times we're not even conscious of, of how past betrayal and past loss infects ourselves and infects our, our state of being. Even if you do yoga, even if you're mindful, if, if you can look back at, at your your relationships and you can see kind of where it went wrong and, and you know, all the relationships sometimes end, you know, these things happen. But if your present reality is being affected by past trauma, we really need to take a look at it and that's kind of the work I do with my clients. So if you have a piece of paper handy or your iPhone or your Android phone or how, whatever way you uh, write stuff down. I want you to, I'm going to turn this down real quick, I want you to, um, I want you to write down, if, if you're going through this, if you're going through a difficult relationship, a difficult time right now, and look back at a toxic relationship that you've had, and um, kind of see where you're being triggered in your current reality. So write down that past relationship or write down what, whatever happened in the past and look to see like, okay, this happened and I'm still not over it and that's okay. But I want you to look and, and make a list of how all the current decisions that you make in your current life, whether it's in your career, whether it's in your um, choosing of partners, Take a look at, at how you're making real important decisions in your life and how that's being impacted by your toxic past. And I talk about the real tragedy in life where we waste a lot of time and energy being effective, being focused on the toxic residue from a, a past unhealthy relationship and how it affects every aspect of our life because basically what we're doing at no fault of our own maybe it's subconscious is that all of that toxic residue whether you were hurt emotionally or physically whether it was a terrible breakup whether your whole sense of being and who you are was impacted whether it was financially, whether it was emotionally, physically, even if it's three or four years afterwards, really take a look and, and see what percent of the time of your, and, and basically what percent of your day you are spending on, on either ruminating about stuff and how that's impacting the everyday decisions that you make in your life. Odds are, these are artifacts from past trauma that are impacting, you know, if, if you're having difficulties making good decisions in your life. You know, sometimes we just make bad decisions. I mean, you know, we're all human. That's the nature of being human. A lot of times it's from old stuff that you really haven't healed in your past relationships. And it doesn't have to be a, a romantic partner. It could be a family member or it could be um, a good friend or someone in your life that was very important to you and for better or for worse it ended and unfortunately that person was toxic or was a, a narcissist and unfortunately narcissists and people that are you know do harm unto us because we are good people because we are people that are in the light that care about others are compassionate and, and understand what it is to love someone we get hurt and we then either become withdrawn, we don't trust, we don't trust ourselves, we don't trust others, and it impacts every area of our life. You know, the biggest tragedy is, is allowing, you know, someone to rent out space in your head that's no longer in your life. Hey, Assad, welcome. That's no longer in your life. That's basically you're, you're feeding, maybe you're not even realizing you're feeding through your own fears and through your own um, um, insecurities and how that is really colluding real life decisions that you're making, okay? We need to extract that, that, that toxic and unruly tenant from your mind, the tenant being past 
trauma from a bad relationship, from a narcissist that really took advantage of you, or a sociopath, or someone that was just, was not healthy for you. We need to extract that feeling, those feelings that are triggered every time we either start a new job, because, you know, when it, whenever we, we jump into something new, right, whenever we go into, um, into a space where we're, where we're out of our comfort zone, all those feelings of fear, of um, feeling insecure about ourselves, feeling insecure about um, how capable we are as, as, a, as a human being or as an employee of a company or starting our own business, a lot of times we are being inadvertently triggered by old stuff that's not in our, not in our periphery anymore, that's not in our current reality anymore, but because our, our cells, our one trillion cells, store all of that stuff, good, bad, and ugly, and our cells are like tape recorders, okay? So think back, think back to when you had that horrible relationship or partnership or marriage, and when you were living with someone who was either, again, a narcissist or a sociopath or what have you, and think back to all those difficult times that you had with that person and how it ended. Okay, maybe it didn't, maybe it just, maybe the narcissist discarded you, or maybe the sociopath discarded you, or maybe the person that was not healthy for you just took off and left. Maybe they stole from you. It's all trauma. It's all heavy negative trauma that a lot of us either, even in therapy, even a well-equipped therapist may not even be able to, to really tap in and see what's going on that's causing a lot of difficulties in your life. Hey, blessed. Welcome, everybody. So we're talking tonight about clearing the mind. Clearing the mind and taking really responsibility for our own thoughts and our own feelings and clearing the mind away from that negative stuff, that toxic stuff, that you remember that happened in, in a relationship or in a partnership that wasn't healthy for you and every time you start something new, every time you jump, jump into that, that kind of unknown environment, maybe you're starting a new job, maybe you're starting a new relationship, maybe you're starting a new business venture. Those artifacts are there. If you haven't done the inner work, if you haven't really processed a lot of that stuff, and I'm not saying that you need to go to a therapist, but I, it, it's being self-aware is understanding, okay, I have these thoughts that are in my mind. A good percentage of them is complete noise. It's an evolutionary um, process that us human beings, I'm oh, sorry, my phone. It's an evolutionary process that unfortunately a lot of us are blessed with. The monkey mind, the mind noise. But a lot of that past trauma can collude our decision making in our current reality. So really take stock and really think about how you are processing past, past stuff. Past stuff that doesn't serve your greater purpose. You know, the, it's a lot of us, especially if we're alpha males, if we're as men, we don't want to look at those feelings, right? We want to be men. We want to just brush it off and say, you know what, it happened. I'm a man, I just, I'll just i deal with it and, and, and move on. But you can't move on when, when you're really still stuck in the toxic residue from, from a toxic relationship that's, that's maybe it's, you're not even aware that it's haunting you. Maybe you're having you know, physical symptoms of, of something that happened years and years ago in a, rela a bad relationship that you haven't really dealt with. And it, again, it's a real shame because all of you are capable all of you have what it takes to be successful in this world. It all comes down to how are you, what are you going to do with all these thoughts in your head? Whether they're old memories of, of, of past abuse, of, of past trauma, you know, and none of this is easy. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not um, saying that the process of identifying 
these these thoughts that these old artifacts of, of, of past terrible memories of of the toxicity that uh, you experience and, and the emotional abuse that you might have experienced in a relationship with a narcissist or someone that didn't serve a greater purpose. So I would write this stuff down. Write this stuff down. And then ask yourself, why do I let these thoughts get the best of me? What is it in, the, in these past experiences that you've had with, with toxic partners are triggering me and, and, and preventing me from having successful relationships or having a successful business because it's all connected, you know? And, and the more that you brush it off and the more that you don't really face it head on, the more damage it's going to do for you in the long term. It's really important to have agency over this now. And again, I'm not saying that you have to go see a therapist now and, and go get EMDR or, or get some behavioral therapy. Um, the work that I do as a, as a trauma coach and life strategist is very helpful in kind of redirecting your energy away from the trauma and processing that trauma and, and apologizing to yourself for allowing someone who was not healthy for you into your life and and what are the learning lessons that you're that what are the takeaways from from these past experiences and what can you learn from it again this is not something that you can accomplish and, and clear through in one day it takes time it, it takes a willingness for you to really step up to the plate and and, and empower yourself to be really cognizant of the toxicity going on in your life and, and, and how much real estate up here the, uh, the past is, is taking up in your mind. I mean, take an inventory right now. Go, throughout your, go through your day. Take an inventory of your day today. And if those, for those of you that have recently been or in the past have been in a toxic situation with someone and how it really has, has negatively impacted you, what percent of your day are you either hyper-focusing on, on feeling insecure or feeling that you're not good enough or feeling that you're, you are incapable of being successful or being productive or, or being um, a, a real uh, positive influence on your kids if you have kids or, it, I mean, what percent of your day are you, are you either when you wake up in the morning or when you are going to bed at night are maybe it's manifested as, as other things. Maybe it, it comes out as something else. Maybe you're not directly thinking about it. But all your insecurities that you may be experiencing, if you have recently gone through a bad breakup or a bad relationship or a bad partnership, could be impacting your, your, current, your current environment. So I want you to think about that. How can you, on a daily basis, be real cognizant of these, these thoughts that don't serve your greater purpose, that are just taking up space. I mean, I don't think any of you would rent out your apartment or your house to unruly tenants, knowingly rent them out to, to unruly or, un, or tenants that would destroy your apartment or, or Airbnb your place to, to unruly tenants. Well, do the same thing when you take an inventory of your thoughts every night. So I want you to really take an inventory of, okay, what thoughts during the day were serving my, my greater purpose and, and what thoughts were just noise and what thoughts were, were probably triggers from, from, from old stuff that's just lingering. You know, when you really become self-aware of, of how you feel and the thoughts running through your mind and, and be really good at, at picking out the thoughts that are not serving your greater purpose, despite your, your, your current situation, despite where you are financially or, or where you live, it doesn't matter. The more you take a daily inventory of where your thoughts are and how you feel, the better off you're going to be in coping and being more successful at coping when things get difficult again. Because, you know, life, life is, is, is not linear. You know, we don't experience life as a, it's not a linear equation. 
Life is, is a series of ups and downs. And during the down periods in our life, when we really are, are, are grasping for straws when it comes to our own sense of self and who we are, and our, our own confidence our, and our own ability to, to navigate through difficult times, I would say a good percentage of the time when you feel hopeless, when you feel like you can't move forward, these are old triggers from old relationships, old interactions with people that were, were mean and nasty to you, were narcissists, were sociopaths, were whatever you want to label them as. And, and they are bleeding into your current reality. And again, I have had clients that um, went through a bad divorce you know, years and years ago, and they're still grappling with the artifacts of the toxic residue of, of, um, of being in a relationship or in a marriage with a narcissist because of the fact is that they're actually believing the noise in their head. They're actually, you know, listening to it like it's the gospel, like it's the truth. The old tapes of, of, of being involved with someone when they said that you're a loser or that you can't do it or that, you know, you're incompetent, whatever it is. When people told you you can't be successful, you can't be, um, you can't be, um, you can't stand on your own two feet or whatever it is. So these are things that I would really focus on over the next couple of days, and this is kind of your homework assignment. Just make a take an inventory, a daily inventory of all the thoughts that were not serving your greater purpose, that were negative, that were toxic. If you can draw conclusions where they're coming from, and if you can't, you could just say, well, it's just old-fashioned mind noise. It's just my perfectly imperfect brain doing its thing. And taking a step back for a second, say, you know what? I'm starting to get clarity on where these thoughts are coming from. I'm starting to get real understanding of where my anxiety is coming from or where my lack of self-confidence is coming from. It's an old tape. It's an old tape from some man or woman that I was involved with or some toxic partnership I was involved with or some toxic business relationship I was involved with and that's triggering my insecurity. That's triggering my, my inability to move forward in my career, move forward in my relationship, move forward in all these areas uh, of my life. Once you identify it, it might be painful even thinking about it. No one likes to go back to uh, think about you know, times in our life when, when, when we were in just horrible situations, emotionally or physically. No one likes to think about that. But it's important to take stock, especially now, if you're in the thick of, if, you, if you're stuck in your, in your own self-doubt and you're stuck in your own um, negativity, odds are it's residue from a past relationship or a past um, partnership that, that was toxic for you. And then forgive yourself every night. You can do the Hapanapal prayer, you know, the, that's the prayer is I, um, I love you, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you. You can say that to yourself. I know it sounds woo-woo and out there and, and you know, I'm a critic when it comes to woo-woo-ness and I would say that um, the, that prayer, the Hapanapano prayer, Hapanapano, I think I said that correctly, is really, really powerful because it really makes you self-aware that you're just a human being, but you're a human being that has the ability to clear out all the negative gobbledygook, all the, the negative mind shatter that is leftover residue from past trauma. I can help you as a coach, help you navigate through that and help redirect your emotional signal away from, from, from past trauma and from past stuff and, and help you become more self-aware. But ask yourself, in my, in my current situation, am I doing the necessary work on myself? Am I, am I taking that daily inventory that I talk about in previous IGTV Lives of, of where my mind is, where my head chatter is. So you're able to be real self-aware and be able to identify it and then be able to move forward 
Because once you write this stuff down, write down the negative head chatter, and then you cross it out, and then you can either say if you have any, in your religion, if you have a specific prayer, you can write, you can light incense, you you can you know take a hot shower, and say to yourself, I'm worthy of a partner that's healthy, and supports me and loves me unconditionally. I'm worthy of being in a business venture or being working for somebody that is going to support me and be a good leader in, in the organization that I choose to work for. All these things will begin to happen, I promise you, if you become more self-aware of the negative head chatter and the toxic residue that we all have and redirecting that signal away from the mind chatter and looking forward instead of looking backward. But you have to, you have to look back to learn from it. You have to look back and take that inventory of, of the negative stuff that happened in the past because then you become your own detective. Then you become really self-aware of, of your thoughts and what is not healthy for you and what is not serving your greater purpose. I hope this has been helpful. It's an honor and a privilege to do this for all of you, for you, you, and you in the nosebleed seats. I will see you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Actually, it might be a different day, but I'll let you all know if, if, it change, if I change the time. Don't give up, and remember, the biggest tragedy in life is renting out space in your mind, keeping that your mind overloaded with an unruly tenant who doesn't deserve to take up space there, and ruminating and, and hyper-focusing on, 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 um, on stuff from the past that, that's, that's not healthy for you. Again, it's a privilege to be here for all of you. If you have any questions or you are interested in my work and you want to sign up for one of my packages um, on my website, go to www.solutions180.com or you can DM me for more questions and how I work and my process. And um, again, don't give up. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you again next week. Take care.